Hi, it's Professor Cummings, and in this video I wanted to go over something called an initial value, initial value problem. You know, that's something we go over in uh, differential equations, uh, sometimes call it IVP. First, I want to define what an initial value problem actually is. Then I'm going to give you the three steps to actually solve the initial value problem. And then I'm going to show you why we even do this. Why are we even worried about initial value problems? So let's start off with the definition. So a definition of it is a differential equation with a given initial condition that allows you to find a specific function that satisfies a given differential equation instead of a family of functions. Now, what we've gone over in class so far is that the solution to a differential equation is a function. It's a family of solutions. So what this initial value problem does is it takes you away from just looking at a family of solutions and actually gives you a very specific or what we call a particular solution. So one of the members of that family of functions that can actually satisfy the differential equation. And this is the standard form. You know, you got a differential equation, you know, the rate of change of y with respect to x is equal to a function of f of x, and this is your initial condition. So the initial condition of of zero or of x is equal to the initial condition of y. Okay, so that's how you read that. Y of x of zero is equal to y of zero. So that's just saying that that's the starting point of the function or the initial uh, data point that we have. So how do we solve this? Like I said, there are three steps to solving a a initial value problem. So let's look at this with an example simultaneously. So we start off with this differential equation dy dx is equal to x squared plus 2x and when x is 1 y is equal to 0 and that's what you read when x is 1 y is equal to 0 so first step you want to take the antiderivative and so what we do is we multiply both sides by dx so you have dy dx is equal to the quantity of x squared plus 2x times dx. You integrate both sides, taking that antiderivative, and what you end up with, you know, the derivative, antiderivative of dy, or of one with respect to dy is just going to be y. The antiderivative of this is the power rule, which is one-third x cubed plus x squared plus c. Now this is the most important part, or one of the more important parts of this process I want you to keep in mind. This is the reason for this arbitrary constant. What that tells us is that this is just a general solution. So going through this process, we have created a general solution. And that arbitrary constant just represents the fact that there could be several different particular solutions that will satisfy this differential equation. Okay, the next step. Apply your initial condition. So you got an initial condition. When x is 1, y is going to be 0. So we're going to have to substitute you know, for x and for y set this whole equation equal to zero so what you end up with you use it to solve for your arbitrary constant so we got y is equal to zero and x is equal to one okay so that just tells us that it's one third plus one plus c is equal to zero so you subtract one third plus one from both sides and you find that c is equal to a negative 1.33 so we solved for our arbitrary constant so we got a solution for arbitrary constant now our third step is substitute the arbitrary constant into our general solution so substitute arbitrary constant into this general solution and that brings us to this particular solution and that's what this one is called it's a particular solution so it's no longer the family solutions now it's a particular solution that satisfies this differential equation so that's y of x is equal to one third x cubed plus x squared minus 1.33 so that is our particular solution all right based on this differential equation with this initial condition very important that's the initial condition then that is the solution so now why would you use this what is the purpose of this well as in engineering this has a a very practical very uh specific reason why so a lot of engineering problems in kinematics thermodynamics and fluid power 
you know, we'll use initial value problems. So let's take our initial problem. Okay, so we got a differential equation. Let's say this is of uh, distance. That's so y distance. So you got the derivative of y with respect to x is time. So that is a velocity, which is just the derivative of displacement, is equal to this function here. So your time squared plus 2x. And you got an initial condition here, basically saying that at time zero, or excuse me, at time of one, say one second, one hour, whatever it is, you're, you've moved a distance of zero, still based around this function. So if we were to go through those three steps and with a general solution, substitute our initial condition and end up with this particular solution, we should be able to get a function for the, time, uh, the displacement of whatever this object is moving with this function of time at any point in time. And that's the whole purpose of differential equations, is to be able to find exactly what is happening with the phenomena at a very specific point in time. And that's what this function tells us. If this was velocity, then this is our distance, our displacement. And just show that with the letter S. So that is just the same thing as saying, based on how fast this thing is moving and this particular function of time, our uh, velocity, we can predict our displacement with this function here. And that's based on the fact that we do have an initial condition. And we could take that same function for our displacement and look at any point in time and we can put it in a chart where we can see we've got you know, units of time here and how far it actually traveled based on this function. We can even graph it. Again, you got a chart of your time, your independent variable. And this is how far you've traveled. Now you can see this is a pretty fast moving object, uh, you know, depending on what type of units we have on it. I didn't put any units on here just because I wanted to keep it more generic, but it travels very fast. And all of this is based, to be based on one data point, which is this initial condition, based on the function of the phenomena. Without that data point, we wouldn't have been able to come up with a particular solution on this particular uh, object. You can see that same data point shows up in all three cases. When the display at time of one, the displacement is zero, which goes here and even shows up on our graph. And that is it. Uh, that is an initial value problem as well as why you use an initial value problem and you get the three steps. Uh, if you wanna see any more videos like this, let me know, go ahead and uh, share it and thumbs up it. It is also on the engineer's reference along with other differential equations and other uh, videos for engineers as well as some downloads that you might be uh, find useful. Thanks a lot.